Chair. Welcome to the regular meeting of the Solid Waste Committee. Today is Monday, April 8th, 2024 at 4.30 p.m. This is 1111 Somerset Avenue, Dighton, Mass, 02715. This meeting is being recorded. The listing of matters are those reasonably anticipated by the chair, which may be discussed at the meeting. Not all items listed may in fact be discussed, and other items not listed may also be brought up for discussion to the extent committed by law. We have called to order, please. McCarran. Perry. Somebody Mullen. James Idea. Robert Perry. David Dewey. The last meeting we talked about, I kind of just got my stuff here. Um, but we, uh, we talked about an uh, updated weight sheet that was proposed by the um, by Superintendent Ferry. And I just wanted to, I think we all just wanted to like, revisit that to just follow up on it um, to, to, uh, to like revisit to see if, if that is something that uh, we wanted to make the recommendation to change and bring forward. I'm trying to find actually what, where it was just so we can bring this seat up to speed as well. Bear with me. Okay. Yes, okay. Um, and today, and this would be a recommendation to employ health at the board of Is that a <laughs> that is good. I don't believe because 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 uh because the things were sitting there are separate from the board of health, these changes would go right to the select. Yes, how they really go right to the select. So um uh actually uh, uh what was that change? Uh, I don't know what it was. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the changes like in red and uh um, give them one to Okay. Yeah. The uh oh uh, uh, yeah, the changes in revenues that the necessarily were the changes uh, like we talked about, you know, one adjust uh, like adjust adjusting a few of the pricing oh uh, like uh, increments. I also I uh, also taking out taking out the ability, taking out the ability. Uh, uh, for folks to bring uh, either half a truck, half, half a truck load, full truck load, half a trailer load, uh, like in a trailer load, like of debris, to like, uh, oh, yeah, like, I mean, really, like, undefined construction of debris to the transportation. Um, because really, oh, uh, because really, like, the volume and the impossibleness to quantify all that has been a challenge. Um, we also talked about Adeki like, having extra language at the top of, oh yeah, the top, uh, at the top of, um, uh, at the top of the rate outline to, uh, to really emphasize that the transfer station is for resident use, all like, all, all like it's for residential use by residents only. Um, like, and then we also had a discussion about like, actually increasing I like, I like increasing the like the transfer station transfer station like sticker, um, increasing the transfer station sticker fee. I uh, to actually to transition that fee process. I uh, to being like a fiscal year fee rather than a calendar year fee. Which is, um, so that's really where we left off last. Uh, like at, at the beginning of last week. Right, the current transfer station rates, we're going to have the, the trash must originate from the town. Yes, right. yes. So, that, yes, I did leave that open for suggestion. We need some better language on the graveage. Like, we have a resident, they clean up their properties from out of town. Right. But he's a resident, so that's, he could argue that's residential use. Right. Well, the, 
Isn't there a sort of a precedent here? You can't take the topsoil out of town. Right. Why should you be able to bring your trash from out of town in town? Especially if we have local, excuse me, especially if we have lower rates from right where exactly uh, traditionally dumping. How do you that? I don't know. So one of the things that the public health um, has the right to limit any trash that um, comes into your, your town line. So you can actually put a bylaw and put you know a fine on it that if somebody does do this and just letting people know this actually exists. So this is one of the um, the mass public health um, regulations that are coming from the state. So you really can do that. So you you regulate any trash within the roads of the site. So so to your point, it's the cheapest thing, least expensive game in town. Right. Yeah. So I can also, so I can also, I can, I can also take you away the ability to bring half the half the trailer load and trailer load, you know, things of junk at all. I can also inherently cut down on that. Right. You know, like some bad, huh? Excuse me. I want to ask a question. I'll get through. Yeah, and then oh yeah, oh yeah, and oh like and once we really and once we really do that, oh yeah, and once we really do that, once we do that, the things we do accept, we are basically charged with what our cost is. So even if we do have doing so even if we do oh yeah, like oh yeah, like whether like it's like the accent or anything else, you know, like we do like accept even if we do accept something, it will be at the cost that the town has to basically dispose of that rather than this undefined, you know, a like trail full of, oh yeah, like of things that we really don't have a cost until we have to actually go like and transfer it out of there. <clears throat> How do you police that? A driver's license? Well, so suppose somebody who has a uh, property out of town comes in with a load in his truck. Yeah, like what if he says to the, the attendant up there, it's my property. How do you know it isn't? You know, you know, you don't really know. No. No. So I mean, <clears throat> what will you accomplish with this? Well, I, I think um, when we <clears throat> did the assessment of basically three and a half years worth of data um, on a transfer station, uh, we we're finding that, for instance, tires were coming in onesies and twosies, and then you'd see 30 come in <coughs> and 40 come in. And I, I, I know it's not a hundred percent of the, the solution, but I think if you see the same person coming in week after week or every other week with another full load of this, and at some point in time, you're gonna say, have you emptied your property yet? <laughs> so, you know, so I mean, the, the, the onus on this is on us to be attended, right? I, I think we do have a way of moving forward. Okay. So like he just alluded to it. So if you have the same person, the same attendant, recognize the same person, bring in for some reason 12 toilets one year, and you can go back in the POS system mm -hmm. and see that you had 12 toilets one year. That's probably not residential use. And further down the price list, unauthorized use is a thousand dollar fine. So you already have leverage to say you probably shouldn't do that. Now, I do have a question on the verbiage, um, and it might help this vote tonight. Um, I think this vote in the Stuckman's vote is mainly for the monetary part, so we right. can change the language and oh, yeah. Yeah. as long as we're not play with the monetary right. part. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that probably should help move forward. Sure. And um, for Missy's sake, she's, she's got some, she's eyes <laughs> pointing at me. <laughs> so I did play around with the steady price and how I came up with that dollar amount is, Took how many stickers have been sold roughly for the last few years divided by the salary, okay. and it comes just short of the 30, so it makes sense to hit 30. Um, I think, yeah, you didn't say to do that, but that was one of the things you pointed out, and yeah. we just I asked the committee what was that fee for, anyways. Yeah. So to have a round of reasons for that fee, mm -hmm. now we have a round of reasons for that fee. Um, it does make sense, uh, we're about to do a book here in curbside pickup. Does make sense to stop, stop, keep the day past the $15 and also the stop for the bulky item pickup, $15, unless someone else has a suggestion. 
So as far as that, I think just to get on, I think it will form including the strikes. Uh, we did add Bridget to an item. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, was it? And we yeah. were that. Uh, we came to some towns on mine. Yeah, but right. I mean that makes sense. Okay. And then the free line charge that's for the admission fridge we get them. That's why that was increased for the AC and Okay. Go ahead. Uh, quick question. Miscellaneous metals, twenty dollars full load. Twenty dollars sounds awfully cheap. What what miscellaneous metals are we talking about? Fence poles. I guess exercise uh, machines and all those, those types of things. Yeah. Okay. How do we, how, how, how you get paid for the disposal of this thing, too? Right. How, like, is like a full load, a truck load, a travel load, what type of load but do we need to fit? Yeah, it's up to the you know, you know, you know, you know, tenant's discretion. Okay. I, I don't think you really have to define that unless you think otherwise, because you're getting paid for the disposal, too. Right. Is that unauthorized use a thousand dollar fine? Is that posted at the landfill somewhere? It should be. We can make sure. Okay. But right underneath, don't be that guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I would also recommend that, um, you know, as you're talking about the rural solid waste program, to mm -hmm. mention this, that this type of thing goes on because, you know, people might rat on other people or, you know, like the might be monitoring and policing it themselves as well. So that kind of helps it cut down. And if you know somebody's watching, then you're not as likely to. Some other tidbits you probably already know. So we got roughly 2,789 households, yeah. 8,330 residents. So those are all potential stickers. We're only selling about 607. Yeah. So it's a very small percentage. And you can see what the, you know, the whole tax base is paying for those mistakes. What, what, what's your point with that analysis? What I just said. So when people try to get away with stuff at the transfer station, the people that don't use the transfer station still have to pay for the difference. That's why we wanted to tighten this up. So it's just people using that for paying for it. The only liability that remains if we lost the, the attendant for a long period of time where we had to switch and the highway department had to take over for a while. We do have overtime in place, but we don't have a mechanism to, to recoup that money. Um, I, I don't know if it's part of the say we have to go through the town council or not, but following on a little more with your example of somebody brings in 12 toilets in a year. Um, how, how do you establish the line in the sand, you know, saying, uh, okay, you must be bringing in from out of town, number one, and then how do you go about doing enforcement? I don't want what I just said to, to slow down any progress here, but you better have a thousand dollar fine. Okay, how do you go about defining you bringing it in from out of town, and how do you go about enforcing? Fine. I, 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 again, I don't want to. I don't want to stop this progress we've got, but that needs that needs to be addressed. There's a lot of little. Excuse me. If I could just add that to the proof, if you go after the thousand dollar fine, you're going to need proof. Correct. So there's, there is a lot of wiggle room, no matter what. The human beings are funny and sure. Um, I did express the need to get cameras up there in the past. I'm still interested in getting some good print. Now that we have internet up there, good print cameras that would help. So you have what's coming yeah. in, and also you have what's going out if it's rejected. Yeah. Okay. The only reason I bring that up is because um, you need to be able, as I said, to, mm -hmm. to define it and draw that line. You get you know, six toilets a year, or in the example I used earlier, you know, I may bring in two or three tires in a year. Okay. The day I show up with 30, now I'm, I'm a vendor. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, so. right. I would think the just having unauthorized use of thousand dollars fine might be enough to scare people. I, I totally agree, but I still think there needs to be a mechanism right. in place that, that if you're going to have that there, you That's need a mechanism right. to enforce it. Right. I would be inclined to agree with you if that amount was more than a thousand dollars. That's just 
Nothing today. Mm -hmm. No. People don't like to pay their bills. Yeah. They ignore their letters. I think they fight it. She's been fighting people for weeks now. Yeah, they ignore their letters. I've seen one check. <laughs> the other thing is. That goes to the issue of proof. The other thing to do is withdraw their service. Like, you can't find anyone. Yeah, that's a suggestion I was going to make. Is if we know who our offenders are, why can't we? Through the POS, we're going to have that. Like, I'm like, I'm even in here what we know from the POS information we have now, but we can see the, we can see exactly right. who the repeat offenders are. Right. So why can't, like that has to why can't we just restrict their their access to the suggestion so I was convinced. I think that would be more effective. Right. I mean, you keep bringing up a dozen toilets. That guy's obviously not changing his toilet 12 times a year. Yeah, he is not on practice. So you're going to have this. This is about the monetary pot. So we got to have this stuff in place. How we police it. Yeah. That's that's the day to day stuff. Yeah, we can, that can be worked out. I can even have language in here as well. Like, have the work to finalize it. Like, abuse of the process may. Oh, yeah, it may result in inability to participate. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I, I think it's, I don't want to oversimplify it, but I really think it's as simple as that. Just uh, revocation of, uh, now, should that be in the hands of an attendant? No, I think that should either be the director of public works or the health director. They have to make that call. Right. Another question. Indefinitely. Your view. Yeah. Uh, I, I, don't know. I guess it depends on what is ignorance. Well, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, if you say to somebody that. So it was it a real mistake or it was an intentional mistake, right? Good luck proof of that. Great. So well, if, you, if you say somebody they lose their privilege to the, to the landfill indefinitely, what are they going to do with it? They're going to on the side of the road. Side of the road. You know, yeah, like it's all down the street all the time. The things we're talking about, through everybody sitting at the table realizes the things we're talking about has ramifications. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, these suggestions are, are somewhat subtle. If they are some people, I think they are subtle. And, and people have to understand this is a service the town provides. This is not a right. This is not, right. you know, mm -hmm. and this service mm -hmm. at one point was taken advantage. Now, all right, I, I have a little different approach. If we are able to identify what is not paying for itself, by the way, Tom, you've done a great job here. I think uh, you put a lot of time and effort into this, and I appreciate that. I think with what you're putting forward, at least on this, you know, superficially, it looks like if we get the stickers price increased, we get some of these items increased, we might have a chance to have a one for one on this where it almost pays itself. Okay. However, the C and D side of things is a whole different story, correct? The trailer rooms. So, what if we forget about the guys bringing a dozen toilets in? Because if we can get it so it's priced for the toilets that they're being paid to be disposed of, I think that's better than trying to chase somebody or have them on the side of the road. Mm -hmm. But if we identify that we have a C and D issue with the truckloads and we eliminate those, mm -hmm. I think we have a chance of making this so that it's it's mm -hmm. self supportive. And, and, if really the, way closer than we go. and if the occasional person who comes in who's using the system, um, but is still paying for their trash to be removed, right. and the taxpayer is not subsidizing that, I don't know that that's really an issue. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think that's totally great. With that. And then the other thing is, like, you can work on like um, enhancing the, the the transfer station, like bringing in some programs that might entice other residents. You said, "Oh, now I think I will get a sticker." Yeah, yeah. Like right. Things like that. Right. Things like the swap shed, I presume. The swap shed. There, there, there are a few other things that I'm still okay. thinking of. Okay. That I think would help. I think it's going to happen naturally, anyways. As building increases, it may not be right. twenty to three years, but five to fifteen years, because no one's yeah. just the average alone. They're going to need that. Yeah. So um, I haven't delved into the data as much as you have, Tom, um, and I know Missy, you have too. Is is the trail loads of stuff coming in really the issue? Okay. Yeah. So what happens if we stop the trail loads from coming in? What's what's the recourse? So what then could the residents will have to contact a private hauler or private dumpster, put it in there, um, or like we were talking before about smaller kind of things called a bag store mm -hmm. that right. hold I don't know how much, but it's actually holds quite a bit right. um, for smaller ones. Um, 
you know, the town can provide, you know, a list of vendors that are nearby or whatever, you know, they're just not endorsing them, but they're just available. But this completely removes, you know, the town from that, that aspect. Um, and I think we talked about the health inspector possibly putting some, you know, um, bylaws in place that how long those can sit out there. It can't be two years, you know. Right. Um, but um, that, that is why right. a lot of times just don't deal with the CFD. The number to show that the rest of the time, most of the time, is already figured out. Yeah, right. So, <clears throat> how big of an issue is this? Is this half trail or trail or thing that we have going on? Is, how, how often is that used? I can see if I was a resident, I would, I would use it. So, it's a individual for those truck roads. I don't know. We're both. We don't know. Yeah, we it's, just, it's just triple. When I was in Saturday, Friday, I'm sorry, Friday, two trailers came in. Basically, you know. So a lot of the items didn't hit what's on the list, but the boxes of all the items could fit in a pound bag and go inside the road. It would have been cheaper to put it on the side of the road too, right? But they just wanted to be in the front of the trailer, throw in the dumpster. Now the stuff in the dumpster goes to a landfill, it does not go to continue. But it is other problems that people are not aware of. And it just makes people start to think a little bit more when you're actually paying for that service that you know maybe you can donate it or you know whatever. But. Yeah, I mean like in year to year or from year to year in like FY twenty like four to FY twenty five, the cost of all that in total is increasing unless we do something about it by fifteen grand. And that has from a fiscal point of view, that really has an impact. Like your bulky fee pick up. More than your trash pickup. So it's a, it's a higher, it's a higher fee. Yeah. Would it be prohibitive if we were able to uh, have a couple of vendors or that like Baxter's, for instance, available here at the office for purchase? If someone comes in for a building permit or doing a home project, we can say here, you know, I understand you can say there are more people in the rules, I get all that, but convenience is everything for people. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure where it, you mm -hmm. might start bumping into prevailing wage. Um, sure, yeah, yeah. Because like we're like directing an avenue, like unless we have uh, any type of arrangement with them, oh, we could be directing basically, and we could review and proceed by directing all the potential business over there. I mean, you can say, you know, you can have a list of vendors nearby and say these are, you know, some vendors within 10 miles or um, one that we, you know, maybe we've contacted you know, a preferred vendor, but not actually <clears throat> paying for it or taking the, the payment for it. Once you start doing that, then, then it becomes part of your program. How about if we just have a sample in the office for people to look at? Say it again? A sample. A sample? A Baxter sample or some other. Oh, yeah. I mean, you literally like have anything on there, but I mean, we don't sell it. Right. Right. I, the reason why I'm bringing that up is um, <clears throat> I, I use Baxter service. I use it. Numerous times on a project I'm doing in Rhode Island. And it's convenient, it's mm -hmm. cost effective. However, I have to search for those when I go to the home side. They're not front and center. Mm -hmm. So the average homeowner goes in there doesn't know that those are located. To me, that's a problem. So if you want to try, and, and mm -hmm. I don't know why the home centers are doing that, maybe they, 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 they use them for contractors mainly. So right. they're down with the contractors. Right, so right. So, so if we're trying to give the homeowners another avenue for their project that they're doing, I just think that they need to be educated. Okay. Touch and feel is big to me. So if we had a bag stirrer in the, in the office that said, here, here's, here's an avenue we can use, they're at your local home centers, we have to call out any of the corporate names, mm -hmm. at your local home centers, ask your attendants if you can't find them. Oh, sure. So, so one little issue with that is that Bankster is picked up by waste management. So then, again, it's almost the perception that the town is preferring mm -hmm. or giving treatment to waste management. I'm just mm -hmm. throwing that out there. But what, what we can do is one of the things I wanted to work with the, the health direct, uh, the health um, agent is we bumping up it to the website. So there, one of the one of the categories on there would be other other places where you can get stuff, and then also with the Home Depot and the Lowe's and stuff, if you actually have their app, you can actually go on the website and it'll tell you what aisles in, how many they have. Right. So they kind of provide those kind of links yeah. for residents. Right. It just makes it easier. I agree. I hate 
you know, yeah. like, oh, here, oh, well, this is five years old. Yeah, you know? I'm not an app guy either. Yeah, so um, it's, it's really, really helpful. helpful. But you're right, they're in the weirdest places. Yeah. I'm like, right. okay. 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 I move them around. But, um, and then you can put them on the Amazon too. So. Right. And you can really pack those things. I mean, oh, I have all yeah, my yeah. time. Yeah. And, and yeah. I have one, yeah. So, okay, this is all good news. <clears throat> so to move this along, um, do we really need to flush out whether or not we want to take these trail loads of, of stuff? Well, if we're going to recommend the price prices to the selectmen, then I think we have to have a decision on whether it's going to be a price that has to be right. charged. I didn't get the last one. Not price they have to work. If we're going to recommend the price increase to the selectmen, then it should be complete. Right. With that, right. Um, right. Now, I'm, I'm not speaking to you, Missy. You're you're actually recommending that we don't take it at all, correct? I mean, it's fine. Right. It's fine. I mean, what, the one thing I would love to be able to have is actual data of how many transfer stations take this kind of thing. But unfortunately, it's not one of those questions we ask. So right. it's literally, you know, me going through looking through the top. I have to be honest with you. Looking through this thing, it's the first time I've seen it. Okay, looking through this thing, it's all the same people over and over again. They're using the transfer station to get rid of their own uh, uh, refuse. And they're, and they're taking advantage of the fact that they can take it in the half truck over. And I don't think the tax base should be subsidized. Right. I guarantee if you go on to Facebook or some social media and find this person's name, he's advertising that he'll come and pick up you know, stuff on Saturday. Right. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> None of them are contractors because I, I, I know most of them. None of them are contractors. So they're probably doing odd jobs, which, which is very prevalent today. People are looking for people to do that. And that is uh, subsidizing the disposal of it. I, I, don't, I don't think that's right. right. I mean, that's, that's really the, the, the part mm -hmm. is that it, other citizens are subsidizing. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Yeah. I did a little bit of a search. Where are they still taking the roads? Uh, the town is not clear to pay for being a state anymore. It's not good. Is, it, is the third party? Is that I'm just seeing it as yeah. the third party. Um, so the Taunton. Landfill or transfer station is not owned by Taunton. It's owned by, I think, Waste Management. So yeah. it's kind of out of my ideal mm house. -hmm. It's a private enterprise. Okay. And the stickers, it's all what you're doing with the stickers, some of the 125 back here. Yeah. <laughs> but you're not paying. Yeah. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And we, we explored that last year. Like, yeah. I think the car model works, especially now with the POS. I just think we need to fine tune it a little bit. That's mm -hmm. all. Yeah, like having having that information, having that information from the POS to show who the users are of the bulk and how and how much of a repeat, how much of a repeat they are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, those, and if I'm, if I'm one of these people when my name keeps coming up, I know eventually they're gonna catch up with me. <laughs> it's just a matter of how long I can do this until they find right. out that I'm, I'm using the service extensively. So I think we're at that moment. <clears throat> so someone gave me a commitment. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> some homeowners are more creative than others, more, more handier than others. Um, the bathroom wall, which you can make sure it's not supporting. Mm -hmm. um, you can get creative in oh, those small renovations. You should be able to fit in multiple bags. You shouldn't need a contract. Now you start talking about contracting bags. That's a little bit more. They probably should have a vendor helping them. You know, the delay person. Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, but and then that person, that higher person, already has the ways to figure it out. Right. Yeah, and just so you understand, general law requires me when I get a building permit, if I have a roof being done, something like that, I'm already verifying where that stuff is going. So, fill out an actual bill waiting? No, they actually fill out a form for my permit. It, it, it tells me what's going on. Just a step before the bill. Right. Now, do I want it that? No, but at least they have to, they're required to fill that off. So, um, but that's, yeah, that becomes the trigger. Right. 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 <clears throat> Which is good. Mm -hmm. But what trigger is that? Building permit. The, the type of project, I mean, it's a bathroom and 
do that just to move. Right. I mean, there, there are specific items that do it, yes. Yeah, I mean, it actually follows the, the trash codes pretty well. Right. Right. What is that thing you volunteer with? Volunteer with? Monitoring trash. Oh, monitoring trash. Yes. You want to authorize this to go to the selectman price list? <laughs> the only question that I just want to quickly follow up on is just like in moving this whole process to the fiscal year, like we talked at the last meeting about the transition into the full fiscal year. Can, oh, yeah, can, can we? Oh, yeah, can, oh, can, oh, can we just revisit how we talked about that happening just so we. That was mostly for the sticker. Yeah, as the person's wage starts at July 1st. Yep. Now it has increased, we're in the middle of the year, so if we do yep. increase now, we're not going to pay for the whole wage with the sticker now. But if we wait until January 1st, we're still in the same boat. So yep. I think we should probably honor it, the existing sticker, get a new sticker for July 1st. That's my suggestion. You suggested well, waiting for six months. I, I, have, I have a third suggestion. Okay. It makes more sense. Plus, it's my idea. Um, <laughs> July 1st is the drop dead date. Stickers will be $30 from that day forth. Anyone who has a sticker in their hand that's still valid until the end of the year has to pay an additional $15 for the sticker to go for another year because right. they already paid more. You got that up last week, also. I think that's the cleanest way to do it. Your sticker is worth $15, $15. and only right. you $15, but the price went up to $30 at July 1. Right. So if I was thinking about an effective date for this list. Yeah, I'm like, sure. Yeah, we'll yeah. 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 make this effective then. July 1st, he's not with one of them. I can't, if he's not going to be wrong. Okay, well, I'm just going to write this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 all of the pay time team in July. It's just going to make it easier, yeah, like it's smoother and roll out rather than chopping it Okay. They actually make out, but. Yes, you have ideas and everyone. Right, just so I understand. If we had this discussion last week, we're proposing that on the 1st of July this year, mm -hmm. stickers will be, we're trying to do two things here, and one of them is the monetary aspect, mm -hmm. but the other is aligned with the mm -hmm. So on the 1st of July this year, if I have a sticker, which I do, I will pay an additional. Fifteen dollars yes. to carry me through the whole fiscal year. year. The whole fiscal year to twenty twenty five. Yeah, so you're actually getting this yeah, yeah, discount today. Yeah. Okay, that, that's that's what I was hoping the answer would be. That's what I thought it would be. But I wanted to be sure about that. And it's a matter of education. Just saying, you know, again, educating the public and saying we're doing this to cover costs, yada yada. However. Uh, if you already have one, it's an additional 15, blah, blah, but it'll have to be a new sticker, won't it? So I have those stickers, so already, because we are three years at a time, you know, new sticker and cover. So that's one way of vetting that. Yeah. Okay, okay, no, it's not a problem. I just want to be sure that, that we're all in agreement, mm -hmm. at least that I understand that the drop dead on this, or the star, if you want, starts the 1st of July, it's either 15 for those that have a sticker, right. or to align with this fiscal year, it'll be $30 for a new sticker. Right. Right. Okay. Perfect. And then we'd stop the new prices on the 1st as well. Right. But well, those could be done plenty immediately. Of, plenty of time for a decision. Okay. Those can be done immediately, right? Once the select one approval, they can be done immediately. No, I heard Mr. you say it's not better to do it all at once. So we lose three months of revenue. I'm sorry. So we lose three months of additional revenue. Which I think what you you gain by that is not having to have a public that's really upset about it when you just throw this at them. I think again the education piece. I'd rather lose three months worth of additional revenue than have you know the uh, secretaries. And Tom and everybody else that's in the town hall mm -hmm. constantly on the phone with angry people. Okay. And what we lose on revenue for what we, the price increase. That's all right. Is right. It's the 30. Yeah. Well, not even the 30, just the increase. Well, isn't there a few lines you've increased as well? Yeah, because of free on and then we created one for rigid class. Mm -hmm. Okay. Question on yeah, I agree completely. Yeah. Do we 
have a car wash where we uh, will uh, we'll redo the bulky waste. Oh, uh, the travel wash to the end of the year as well. Till July 1st. Yeah. Just roll back the clock just one second. Mm -hmm. With regard to, I was looking at rigid plastic a couple of weeks ago. I took a load in and the attendant charged me for rigid plastic. It's okay. You know, so I, I don't I don't necessarily think that the, the issues with the it now. But then again, maybe all at once is a better way of I, I think that you it's a lot of education, so you don't want to beat them over the head, but you want to keep it simple. Oh absolutely. So if you have the opportunity for education to have two months, two and a half months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can figure that out if, if the select board wanted the select one wanted to yeah. you know, prove that now effective the first of July right. and we can get an education piece mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. mm -hmm. just just there it is. Right. And we don't know you said yeah. two other members <laughs> just you might have a lot of discussion out of this right. rather than one meeting. We don't know. Yes. Mm -hmm. We might have more work to do right? No, I think it's be great. Yeah, let's run up the flagpole and see what happens. <laughs> Um, I didn't mean to back up on this. No, 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 yeah. I understood when you know the milestones or whatever. Yeah. So since our last meeting, it has nothing to do with this because the word's not out yet. We had one mattress dumped. That's the pile of bags you see in Fremont Street. Mm -hmm. That happened over the weekend. And it's more than a truck with a tires on Brook Street. So that's the truck tires are definitely not a resident because no one has more than a truckload of tires. Right. It has nothing to do with this. Mm -hmm. But you might hear chatter. Mm -hmm. I don't have to tell you. I'm aware about them. They'll be picked up this week. Mattress we already have. It's trash on Tremont Street? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just have to be open. We're going to blame it on the eclipse. It was the eclipse yeah. this week. Well, I mean, if you, if you have a stretch of road that goes along a mile, mile and a half with no. I was it's, not, it's, it's near a house. Room. It's near a house. No. At first, I thought, well, because people steal our litter sometimes. At first, I thought that's what it was. But the area is still mm -hmm. litter infested. Probably. Yes. It's, it's close enough to the house where they should have heard something. Oh. Wow. Well, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, what about I keep bringing, What about this trail road stuff? What are you going to do with that? Is that going to be a reference to the cycle at all, too? We're stopping them? If I can try one, correct? Right. I think July 1st is the way to go. Okay. I don't think we're losing enough. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. I don't think we're losing enough revenue. And if we do everything July 1st, it's like I said, the education part. We um, can certainly okay. sell it at the selectmen's meetings. We have uh, okay. eight or nine between now and then. Okay. So, so there might be something here we don't know about. <laughs> Grandfather clock or something like that. Right. I mean, the tenant's going to have it. He'll just have to match an item that's similar to it on the list. Right. And come up with a price. Yeah, that doesn't mean someone can't come up with a trailer. It just means they're not really trailers. And I get charged by the yeah. trailer load. They yeah. get charged by the yeah. individual yeah. prices. Right, exactly. Yeah. And I think that's a key yeah. issue. Yeah. Right. That's right. Yeah. And we don't want trailer loads and we buy a piece. And does that mean that if it's not on this list, it stays on the trailer and goes back out the gate again? Right. Try to resolve unless it's propane tanks or something like that. Right. Mike and I are going to have um, it's like a conversation with the selectman. It's going to be on channel nine in the new studio when it's open. We're just going to have oh, five, yeah. six, ten oh, piece every true. month. Yeah. Uh, coffee or every other week. Coffee um, with Mike. Coffee, coffee with Mike. Mike. <laughs> uh, so that's one way of now getting more information out there. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's a good idea. So do we need to make a motion? Uh, I think yeah. the prices certainly, if we still want to leave everything else uh, up to discussion, let's get the prices over with first. So you want, like, we want to make this in a series of motions, prices stand alone and then the timeline stand alone? No, 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 no. no. Uh, he was talking about the verbiage. Yeah, we can work on the verbiage in the way and like we can perfect that as we move closer to July 1, but just to have uh, really in terms of the pricing and working on that. But you yeah. know, that's what I was saying. Yeah. We want to, for the, in other words, to make a motion to accept these or propose these prices 
effective the 1st of July, and then another motion to effective the 1st of July with regard to sticker sales. Do you want that all together? And one no, I think, yeah, I think it can all go together. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and it's, it's a recommendation to the board of select. Right, correct. Okay. And it's, not, it's too late to hear it this Wednesday, but mm -hmm. uh, the 28th, I think, is the one after this Wednesday. You can certainly get it on the bench for that. Uh, sure, why not? Uh, I make a motion that we present to the select uh, the proposed price increases on this uh, current transportation fee as annotated. And in addition, uh, align the uh, transportation sticker sales with fiscal year. Uh, and, uh, those residents that currently have a sticker uh, would be charged an additional $15 uh, effective the 1st of July. And any stickers sold after the 1st of July this year would be at a cost of $30. Did that cover mm -hmm. your cover? Just mm -hmm. everything in there. Okay, the motion made. Is there a second on the floor? A second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, you guys have it. So just have one other quick follow-up question. In terms of uh, based on like, the uh, yard waste that season beginning soon, uh, 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 residents who don't, well, I would say typically don't buy the sticker in January, they wait, they wait until they first rate, oh, like at the beginning of uh, April, like, should there be like a public education to those people that they may have actually bought a like, sticker now. Huh. Oh, what they buy now is really only good for um, uh, only has the potential to be good for two months. Right. I think once the board selectmen hit the board selectmen act on it from that day forth. Then we do it then. Okay. Okay. Just hold that. Yep. This is valid to June 3rd, 2024. After that, like there'll that. be an additional fee of $15. Right. Like that. Yeah. Education. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Right, Tom? Either way, yeah, we're not going to lose this. Okay. Thank you. Okay, moving on to B, funding discussion based on current expenses and revenues. We, yeah, that, that like really, uh, like I just did it on the way I went back up to speed. Uh, we talked about where we were in the current fiscal year, how we were trending. Uh, like we're actually year, oh uh, yeah, like year to date, just in terms of the transfer, just in terms of the transfer point. Oh yeah, oh 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 yeah, yeah the other day we're trending in revenues. Total solid waste revenues about twenty thousand dollars behind where we projected. So in going uh, into FY25, like at this point we have had to we've had so far drop that revenue which we projected to be a two hundred and ninety thousand dollar revenue. Oh yeah, we're projecting that revenue without any changes right now and we just have to have the changes. Um, that we talked about that we recommended, but until that actually hits and is finally approved, we have to draw that revenue back out of 270. I also, just in terms of expenses, where we are in terms of the transfer station expenses, um, based on where we are now, based on where we are now, we're projecting about a $15,000 increase like in bulky waste, um, in bulky waste disposal going into F525. So that brings everything to our head and then we're looking at all oh, exactly where we are in terms of in terms of our entire in terms of our entire cost structure for the solid waste program. So we're over 35,000. Yeah 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 oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah like I would like I would say just really a quick eat. Oh like, and then that's only be getting in to the sustainability of the broader structure. So that's all I got there in terms of just building, in terms of laying out where we are. Discussion? 
and we want to see review of other town operational budgetary models. Yeah, yeah, you want to go in? So I just wanted to kind of show the different models. The first one with the list of all the towns, the basic one chapter. These are towns and cities that only use the property tax for paying their trash and recycling. Um, and it could be that they have a transfer station, but the curbside is up, it's all over the place. But it's also interesting to note that if you look at some of the populations, it's usually larger cities or very, very small areas or some very unique communities like Avon, who happens to have the waste management recycling center there. So they have a very uh, component that's very unique or um, I don't know where you might have waste management in there so that they get special needs. So, and then you also see some fairly wealthy communities. So these are just the ones out there, but I can also tell you that in my district with 43 uh, municipalities, already I have two that I know of who are moving away from this model because it's not sustainable. Um, and I know I've been hearing the same thing from my other maps. Um, so that's just kind of where it's at. So we're moving away from that, that model. Would that be because of recycling? Say that again? Would that be because of recycling? Um, it's a little bit of everything, actually. Um, so the price of the trash is going up. Um, you know, there's just there's, there's just a lot going on. So, but the recycling is a big thing because it's in some in some areas it's actually more like in yours it's more than in the trash. Right. So, um, and then so the other model that I wanted to point out. Is, um, communities that only the one for little fire numbers. So it's a transfer station fee only. Um, so again, these are the communities that only have transfer stations. And I'm just showing you what their average fee is for that. Um, some of them will have a flat fee, uh, some will have an additional fee, but uh, so these are the ones with the fee based only. So again, it kind of gives you an idea of what they're paying. They have their residents schlep all their stuff there. They're still paying, you know, it comes out to two hundred thirty-one dollars on average. So they're still paying it quite a bit. And they have to bring it to the transfer station. I'm sorry. And they have to bring it to the transfer station. Exactly. So just so I understand it, mm -hmm. um, what I see with the oh, blue bar here. Yep. So this one down here. Yep. Um, is from Zelika Dyke. That would be the transfer sticker fee. Is that correct? No. So this. So what, what is that? Well, in in that town, yeah, I guess it would be, I, it would be yeah. a fee. it would be a fee. You're right. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So this is transfer station fee only. So. So this one does the, the pictures don't match. Like for something weird, I don't know if it's the eclipse, but I couldn't do graphs yeah. anymore. <laughs> so <laughs> so these are just simply our list of the towns okay. that have that model. Okay, so so no it would be it would be a it's a transfer station with a sticker fee mm -hmm. and pay as you throw. No, this one is absolutely flat fee, nothing else. The, the, the chart does not match this up here. Okay. Yeah. But so the one down here yeah, so is, is actually what I did is I looked at comparable communities that have 33 gallon, which which Dighton has, mm -hmm. rather than. Mm -hmm. okay, so I, I, just so I understand, are, yep. you, are you saying that Littleton has a sticker fee of $155? No, so this information down here, yes, it's completely different. No, I'm okay. 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 Yeah. So, uh, so, so down here in the chart that you're looking at, okay. So what I did is I looked at communities who have 33 gallon mm -hmm. pay as you throw bags, right? Which are down here. They have a transfer station with pay as you throw bags and no annual fees. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the like so, most like us then. So exactly. you you have a transfer station fee, a sticker, and in addition to that, you bring 
your trash to the transfer station in a bag that you can Okay, yeah. good. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so this is, there's so many different flavors of this going on. And then to confuse it even more, in this particular model, the little orange line, you, there are even fees to go to that transfer station. Right. Um, and then also some of these uh, in here, like in my town of Shrewsbury, you know, they don't have anything in there. So we don't have, um, actually we don't have a transfer station. Actually, I should not be labeled this one, I labeled it wrong. So these are the ones that the 33 gallon and no fees. So Shrewsbury, we do not have a transfer station at all. Okay. So we don't have any annual fees. Our program is strictly the pay as you throw. Oh, I'm sorry. Sturbury. And then stir, yeah, yeah. You know. And then there's some really wonky ones that I took out of there, and I don't know whether it was a mistake because this is all information that is entered yeah. by you know the community themselves. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to be 50. It was supposed to be you know whatever. Oh, of course. Yep. The people who do this bar graph. Okay, well, so this is no. we're in a different bar graph here. I'm all we're on the little one. Do we have any idea at all, like for instance, what the average income of a family in Littleton? Okay. Littleton has a, a, a fee of 155. Yeah. I'm asking you, do you have any idea what the average income of a family is in Littleton? What did you find that? I get it. So the average, I'm sorry, what in Littleton? The average annual income. I, I can look that up as something that's totally separate from the data that I get from the trip. The, but isn't uh, it relative to, I mean, if you have a gen, and your income is higher than this figure 155, it makes sense. Um, I, don't, I don't think it's relevant right. at all yeah. because you're talking about how you pay to get rid of your refuse. Doesn't matter if you make 10,000 or 50,000, you still pay X amount to pay to get rid of your refuse. Yeah. So I don't think it's relevant at all. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I, I like to look at. I do like to look at it to see what model they use and what they've gone into. But but um, Jim, Jim's right that really you know you have a fee that you have to pay. According to Google, which is always right, no <laughs> tens right. median income is lower than that. Sixty-one thousand dollars. Yeah, what is your authority to say that it's always right? I didn't say it was always right. That was sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so basically, these are communities um, that you know have a transfer station and pay for the roadbacks. The other one, this is um, where it is. Uh, this is the one where it's annual fee only, and. So the ones with the annual fee only, um, these are not pay as you throw. They don't. Uh, they may or may not have transfer stations. But the only way that their their trash is paid for is to a fee. And so looking at this, I think gives you a really good idea of what municipalities are paying across the state for for their trash and recycling services. Um, and that's a that's a fee. Correct. Correct. Um, so when we look at a figure like actually let me back it up. I'm sorry. It's a fee per household who uses the municipal services. That is what all of this is, and that's that's a very big difference. Even when you're talking about your fee, that's something that you need to consider because if you, um, according to the data, only one to four. Um, households are allowed into the program design. So if you had an apartment complex or something, a very large condo program, it would not be allowed in there. Towns can make those decisions. Um, then those residents are not part of the municipal trash program. They have to contract a provider all by themselves. Um, so that is, so these are um, households who use the municipal services. So my question is, yep. if you go to Stanton, uh, was that Blanford at 95 and you go to Hockman at 696, the difference between those two mm -hmm. figures is totally population? Um, the other thing is, Blanford is totally in the middle of like central mass, in the middle of nowhere. Um, a lot of these, those little communities like that are part of regional um, 
refuse districts so that they have kind of like a combined place that they can all go to. So it's kind of an economies of scale kind of thing. Um, or the other thing is they might not be offering much at all. It might be a transfer station literally lived with just to take the trash there. In my um, nephew's living in Goshen, and they've got the Goshen and three other communities that sort of form this compact with a refuse company to, to pick up the four towns. Yes, and that is very common out in the western part, central part, and then the northern part as well. Most of the population of about 800. Just wasn't yeah. cost effective to go along. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, like again, if you look down here, like Stannis Field, I'm going to guess that's out in Western Max. So I don't know who it is. Beverly, I'm not sure what or why. It could be another one of those communities that has an ash landfill or has a incinerator in the community or something within a uh, waste program where they're getting a, a good deal. So I'm not sure about that. But, and again, New Marlboro is another one of those out in Western Mass. So, but if you really pretty much look across the board, uh, the average is about 311. So that's kind of, you know, what everyone's paying for. Um, the one that, the last one is the, looking at pay as you grow, annual fee and transfer station fees. So this is the model that, um, you know, Dighton might be looking at. And this is again, just explaining the whole, sorry, okay. um, the, uh, the whole process across the board. So Hudson, um, is a very expensive program. They don't have a lot to offer the residents um, in the way of other services and stuff. The other thing is this data, I should have started with this. This data is from last year. If they report last year's um, information. A lot of these towns, like Dighton, are going through some of the financial issues. They're already in the process of changing. Mm -hmm. I know Hudson is changing their program already. Mm -hmm. um, so again, you know, when you look at the programs, um, what the PT costs are. Um, so the annual fee is the blue. The orange is their transfer station access fee. And then the little gray part is that they have a, a per visit fee on top of it, um, which. So no matter what you drive in with, it's $25. Yeah. I can tell, you know, so some of those communities that I can see mm -hmm. that are, are college communities. Mm -hmm. Dartmouth, mm -hmm. Belcher Town is near the Mass Amherst, um, mm -hmm. Sandwich is the Cape. Um, so, you know, those I think have a, have a lot to do with it. It has to do with the demographics of you know, your, your population. So, this is kind of what we're looking at. Um, for fees and for the um, transfer station access fees. So, again, everyone is kind of looking at it just in these models. But one community that looks very similar to um, the Titan I found was from Lomba. Um, I looked at pretty much all the parameters. Um, you know, trash was not picked up from schools and um, the transfer station and things like that. So they were a very similar model. Um, and this is what their data was last year. And the other thing with the fees is that they don't necessarily have to go through the same approval process um, that the trash bag um, cost increase would. So some communities like Medway. Um, at Bank of Detroit, they need a better fee. However, they haven't raised their pay energy drug bag prices in many years. So they actually really try high trash tonnage because of that, um, because there's no incentive by, for the residents to really save it for. So, you know, the prices do need to be adjusted. Yeah, I think, um, as an aside, I think that needs to be the, the ability to allow the Board of Health or the selectmen to uh, raise the fee on computer monitoring from $10 to $15. If the disposal cost suddenly goes from $10 to $15, uh, it should have that ability and however we need to incorporate it right. uh, into an action by the board to sort of take the role. And we're doing this because, right. I don't think it, it, this needs to stay away from 
annual town meeting because these things, oh, you know, three days after the annual town meeting, right. the price is going to go up. So, um, so these are just, it's just a look at all the different communities and the way that they, they're funding their programs. Um, you know, yeah. And like I said, these are, I know a lot of these are going to be changing. It's good, good mix too, you know, even as the ones that are, are different animals from us, it's good mix of presentation. Just like, uh, just off topic, we have a conflict with Zoom right now, and the CPC needs to use Zoom in order to have a qualms. So we end the Zoom, okay. but do we have an ability to continue on with the meeting? Mm -hmm. I can we'll just have everything reflected in the meeting minutes. Okay. And just for the record, no one was on Zoom. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Jim.